Hey, it's Clay at ClayTrader.com. This will be my top 10 stocks as we head into Thursday, April 7th. This will be a technical analysis breakdown. So if you are somebody that uses charts within your trading, or maybe you're just interested in learning more about charts and how they can be used as a tool to help make good decisions as a trader, this will be a video for you. Real quick, before I get to the watch list, I first just wanna personally invite you to get signed up for this free live online class that I'm offering here soon. So if you like what you see as I go through the video and you wanna learn more about this tool, how it can and should be used to build consistency as a trader, then definitely get signed up for the free class. If you're watching on YouTube, there's a link down in the description box. If you're watching at my site, there's an area right there on the webpage that you can click on to get signed up. So again, if you like what you see, you wanna learn more about this tool, then certainly get signed up for the free class. And then very quickly, couple of clarification points. First off, this number over here is moving around. And then if you look over here at the candlestick, it's still moving. The market's still open for a little bit of time. So you're not crazy. You're not seeing things. Things are still shifting around here, but the market's close enough to being done where everything I talk about will still be relevant. But I like to do these videos when the market's still open for a small amount of time, because sometimes we can capture some really interesting late day price action here on video. And then next I'll be using the 30 minute time frame. So for your beginners, what that means is that each one of these candlesticks here, as they're called, represents 30 minutes worth of time. So first one here, ticker symbol ADN, popular price range down below that $5 mark and a very, very impressive day from a you know volume standpoint. And now just from strictly a pattern perspective, very nice pattern here that's taking shape, which is nice because when you have well-defined patterns, whether you wanna call it a self-fulfilling prophecy or not, a well-defined pattern can certainly produce some very worthwhile movement. And in my mind, the level here that a lot of people are gonna be watching is that tread line right there. People are gonna be watching and waiting, and while nothing is guaranteed, my point here is it's more than plausible to think that if the price could come up to that area and then get the break up through it, that that break right there could very well produce quite a bit of upwards buying pressure. So keep a close eye on that. That area is right up there around, let's just call it $3.75. So keep an eye on that from the resistance side of things. As far as supports are concerned, and for those people that like to potentially play pullbacks, key level from a support standpoint, right down there around $3.30. And then if you just wanna kind of map out the entire pattern, keep it one color, we have our resistance, we have our support, we have the big momentum move right there. We'll put our golf hole down there to make it more visual. And this would be known as a bull pennant pattern. Next one, TWTR Twitter. And overall, a, a pretty just good solid day, not in the sense of the price exploding upwards, but in the sense of, you know what, it, it's maintaining those gains. I mean, this thing made such a big move you know, back a couple of days ago that it becomes a very plausible question to throw out there of, okay, yeah, that's great that it came all the way up here, but is this thing just going to give up all these gains? And while, I mean, that's still, of course, possible, my point here is that it doesn't really seem so. Even after the gap down that started this morning, price recovered nicely. Sure, it did pull back, but again, it consolidated up here, which is still higher than where it was on the gap down. And then you take a step back and you look at things from more of the bigger picture point of view. And overall, the thing is still just chopping away. And most importantly, like I said, maintaining those gains. So overall though, you know, the more and more time goes on and the price respects these levels, the more and more of a self-fulfilling prophecy, if you will, is gonna get baked into the equation. And that's what we have here. So still have that main level up there around 53.25 as resistance, talked about that in a previous video. But you can see right there, price actually got relatively close to it, but then got rejected. And then as far as the overall support is concerned, I, I suppose got somewhat close to it right there. Uh, but point here being is right now, there does seemingly have a, a sideways channel that's forming. So the main question in my mind really is going forward, how long is this sideways channel going to last and who's ultimately gonna win out? Are the bulls gonna win out? with a big breakout to the upside, or the bear is gonna win out with a break to the downside. That all, of course, remains to be seen. Next one, AMC, and as anybody will tell you that's involved in the world of you know technical trading and charts, not a good day. Not because the price was red, but because from the technical point of view, the price has now broken down and stayed below that pink line, which on my chart denotes the very, very famous well-known 200 period moving average. Now that doesn't mean that the chart is for sure guaranteed to continue to drift lower and lower, but just from, again, a strictly technical point of view, you don't wanna see prices break down below their 200 period moving average and then stay down below them, which is what has happened here. So moving forward now, if there is any sort of attempted bounce in the upwards direction, the two main areas of resistance are gonna be that pink line as number one, and then the uh, 50 period moving average at purple line is number two. So as of now, that 200 period moving average currently valid, let's just call it $21 and 20 cents, and then the 50 period moving average right there at that $22 mark. So again, if there is any sort of bounce, uh, yeah, of course the price can bounce, but there's gonna be some, you know, downwards pressure being, you know, you know, forced upon it. And these moving averages, you know, 
do a good job of, in my mind, of symbolizing that. As far as supports are concerned, the buyer stepped up several times today, right down there at the $20 range. In fact, once, twice, three times. So four times the Bears try to go down there and push through it. So to give the Bulls some credit, the Bulls held strong several times today at $20, but that is for sure going to be a very important level of support over the next couple of days. Next one, T-L-R-Y. And I summarize this, uh, this was basically a gap and trap today. Now, I emphasize today because when you look at the overall chart, as you can see right here, the overall trend is still upwards. Uh, but looking at just today individually, gap and trap. I mean, a, a pretty brutal day. There was this big gap up, price opened there. Price then went all the way up to that area. Some poor souls were buying here. And then after that, pretty much just down and down it went. In fact, last 30 minutes, which again, that candle is still moving. You can see final 30 minutes, it continues to sink lower and lower. So at this point, my big question, I think a lot of people are gonna be wondering is, okay, clearly today gap and trap, but does this downwards pressure carry it all the way down to the pink line there, which as I just talked about in the previous chart, is that very famous, very well-known 200 period moving average? And if so, can it hold? So I think a lot of people are gonna be very curious about, let's just call it $6.90 over the next couple of days, uh, because it, it does seem like there's a good chance that it could come into play. And then at that point, things get very interesting because that could very realistically be a bounce point, but it could also be one of those areas where if it's broken, then there might be a, a, a flurry of shorts and so on that come into it and potentially have the price gain even more downside traction. But that's the whole idea of a watch list, right? Is to find areas that you find interesting, that you find worthwhile, and then watch to see what happens and then base trade plans off of that. So, you know, what will happen if it does go down to 690? Nobody knows that. But what we do know is that it, that is going to be a very highly watched area. So it's worth watching and worth seeing if it behaves in a way that's, that's uh, you know, would fit your criteria to form a trade plan around. Next one, M-U-L-N. I've done this several times before, but want to get a few updates in play. First thing to do is actually some house cleaning, just get rid of these lines up there. Sure, they still pertain to the chart. They're just not really relevant right now. And from a presentation standpoint, I don't want to risk causing confusion because there's lines and clutter all over the place. So let's try to keep this clean as possible. But overarching from the near-term area, as far as resistances are concerned, key level that stands out to me up there at $2.90. Now you're not wrong at all to say, well, Clay, what about the moving averages right there? I would, I mean, you're absolutely right. Those would be, uh, you know, levels of resistance too. But like I said, to just try to keep this as clean as possible, 290 would be that main level because if the price does get up to 290 and breaks above it, think about what that's implying. That's implying that the price has already done battle with those levels and left them in the rear view mirror. So in my mind, 290 is the more important level. But again, you're not wrong to say that the, the moving averages right there would also potentially serve as resistance. As far as areas of support are concerned, what I'm getting, in, what I want to put in here is more so just kind of a curiosity point about this overall trend line right here, which the price isn't necessarily close to being at, but I mean, it's still within, you know, general striking distance. So I'm curious moving forward, if the price does go down in that area, can it hold up as it's done several times in the past? Uh, but like I said, the, the main dynamic here is can the price recover and get back up over 290? Uh, still a couple of days left this week. So let's see if the bulls can get the job done. Next one here, AMD. And this will mean a bit more of those that have watched past videos, but Again, a bearish day, not necessarily because it was red, but because from the technical point of view, it now broke through You know, what had been a, a very solid area of support, which you can see via this green line from past videos. Uh, but the first update here that now came, comes into play is just based on a foundational rule in charting, which states when levels of support are broken and closed below, they tend to act as resistance. So moving forward, 106 is gonna be that first key level of resistance to watch. So if there is any sort of attempted bounce, which looks like it could happen, right? At least the price has started to go sideways. Now don't get me wrong, just because the price went sideways, doesn't mean that for sure guaranteed this is the bottom, but it's at least a plausible thought process to have. So if the price does try to bounce, then that first big question mark right there at 106, can the price actually break back up above it? As far as areas of support are concerned, as we're seeing here, we're having to go back quite a bit into the chart's history because it's been a while since the price has been down this low. But the next key level of support that wasn't quite hit today, but pretty close right there at the 101 mark, which going back through the history of thing, wait, you can't see this because it's behind my beautiful face. So let's, uh, there we go. So right there is that first time it bounced, second time it bounced. So if the, and even today, I mean, it got, somewhat close, but point here being 101, gonna be one of those levels that a whole lot of people are watching. And again, if the price does try to bounce, 106 will be that key level of resistance. Next one, SBFM did this in yesterday's video and watched us put that trend line in a play. So a big congrats to those of you that were watching it early afternoon when the price came up to that trend line. And then you can see right there, got the break of it. And then from there, it made a very, very nice tradable move. Now this all depends on your perspective. 
I mean, is this still a good or bad looking chart? Well, I don't know. For those people that bought right there and you know scalped out on the day trade, it was a great chart. For those people that suffered from FOMO and were buying up around here, well, yeah, from that angle, things are not looking so good. But like I said, is this a good or bad looking chart? That all depends on what your game plan was. And also, if you just care about the big picture point of view, everything is still perfectly fine. You still have your moving averages with nice upward slopes to them. You still have higher lows being put in a place vision those as stair steps. So like I said, it's really just all a game plan of what was your strategy going in. Uh, but overall, yeah, bit of a pullback here after a great breakout. Um, and that's what also brings about this first key update. Again, resistances tend to act as support. And that is exactly what's playing out right now. I mean, the power of charts, check it out. This last 30 minutes, price has pulled back and looks right, right where it's currently trying to bounce from. So that'll be the first question is, you know, can this trend line ultimately prove to be support and push the price back upwards. If the price does break down through that trend line, then the next key level of support will be right there at the $5 mark. In terms of new levels of resistance moving forward, key level to definitely watch in the near term, gonna be right up there around that $7 mark. And with a high volume break of seven, you gotta like the chances that it gives, you know, these highs another test, but only time will tell. Next one, ticker symbol MF. And I like this one for one reason and one reason alone, and that is because of this line right there at $1.75. I have no special skill. I'm not trying to proclaim that that's some sort of special discovery. I assure you a bunch of people are watching this area of 175, which brings us back to the talking point of self-fulfilling prophecies. So while nothing is guaranteed, it is so plausible. It is very valid to think that if this consolidation can continue uh, and it's looking very healthy right now and then work its way up to there and then get the break up through that level, that that could very well create a whole nother round of upwards buying pressure and momentum. So I just like the very clean nature of this pattern. Can you have that nice clean level of resistance? You have some support right there. You have the momentum move. You have the bull or the, excuse me, the uh, golf hole down there, which creates a bull pennant pattern. So if you like to play, you know, price range down below the $2 mark, you like bull pennants. Here you go. Next one, PLTR and a very rough day for this one. And like I said, not necessarily because it was a red day, but because of the technical nature of it, where the price gapped down and then just blasted down through that pink line, which you now know is the 200 period moving average and is now remaining down below it. So once again, along the lines of when levels of support are broken and closed below, they tend to act as resistance. So if there is any sort of attempted bounce in the upwards direction, $13.33 will be that main area of resistance in the near term. But what I'm even more curious about now is how is the price gonna behave if it can get down there and touch these levels at 1275 which let me add in a bit more context, which you can see right here was basically the bottom part of this consolidation before another very nice move up. Um, and if the price goes down there and breaks through it, you know, that's just further confirmation that the, the bears are gaining that much more power. Now, the bears, of course, flex their muscles today, no doubt about that. But are they gonna keep flexing? Are these muscles gonna keep growing for the bears? Like I said, I would use that as, you know, that confirmation point of just how strong today's gap down and push to the downside was. So in my mind, you know, that 1275 mark, very, very revealing level. Next one, TSLA Tesla. And this is one that I do every day, try to trade it every day. I actually did not trade it today, I traded in NVIDIA. Uh, but overall, I mean, the power of charts and I'm not patting myself on the back here. I am patting charts on the back. I mean, and this will mean a little bit more of those that watched yesterday's video, but I drew in that trend line. Now with the gap down again, the rule states that levels of support, you'd expect to act as resistance. And I mean, you just can't make this stuff up. Price cap down below it, bounce up a little bit and then look right where it got rejected, right at that former support line and then down it went. Uh, so I could, suppose I could probably argue with myself and say I should have been watching Tesla to play that, but I happened to be watching NVIDIA and I had still a just fine day, uh, but I kind of had to laugh to it. But pointer being, that's the power of charts. So quick plug, definitely get signed up for that free class. But moving forward though, this remains a very key level of resistance. So I'm gonna go ahead and extend that level out uh, just so we can continue to track it over the next few days. On uh, more of the near term, yeah, that's more of a, like I said, overarching level, but in the very near term, that level right there at 1060, very interesting level. And then as far as supports are concerned, let me make sure I'm not missing anything. Key level of support to watch, initially gonna be right there at uh, the 1040 mark. And then after 1040, that 200 period moving average right now, currently valid, let's just call it the 1020 mark. But overall, wild, wild day on Tesla. I love to see this volatility, so let's see if it can continue moving forward. So that wraps up the top 10 list. Again, if you like what you saw here and you wanna learn more about this tool, how it can and should be used to build consistency as a trader and why it's so powerful, definitely get signed up for the free class. Like I said, it'll be very soon, Thursday, April 7th, 
at 7 p.m. Eastern time. So I hope to see you there. As far as these top 10 videos are concerned, if you like this format and if you'd like for me to continue to put in the time and effort to create this content, then please help me out with some basic feedback. Hit the like button, leave a simple comment, say hi, tell me what you traded today, tell me what you're watching tomorrow. But those two things communicate to me that you enjoy. And as long as I know people are enjoying, then like I said, I have no problem at all continuing to put in the time and effort uh, to get these watch lists created. So again, get signed up for that free class. Hopefully I'll see you on Thursday. Everybody take care. Have a good one.